So, uh, from Rome, I'd like to introduce the uh, product manager, Matthew Coleman, to the stage. Matthew, welcome. Yeah. So, maybe you get that. What does Rome do? Typical day. <laughs> Typical day. Uh, so, Rome is a, uh, a virtual world asset management solution provider. So. Basically, uh, we provide a traditional, uh, a, a, provide an alternative approach to the traditional asset inspection task, which for decades, for the last you know, 50, 60 years, uh, uh, its assets have been inspected from within the field. Uh, human subjectiveness being applied on a cyclic basic in the field. And what we're actually being able to do is using technology, a highly automated uh, data acquisition platforms, such as what you've just seen a demonstration of, collecting terabytes and terabytes of data a day, being able to interpret that and build high resolution, high fidelity, digital uh, representation of that infrastructure, and then run machine learning style engineering analysis across those models and providing client with deep insight into the risk and condition of their infrastructure. And what they're able to do with that is you know, through better knowledge of how vegetation is growing and changing in around that infrastructure, how power lines, uh, the position of those power lines is changing over time as, as land usage changes, other infrastructure gets built in around that, those power lines. As, um, as the asset condition changes, uh, basically being able to, with more information, able to build more cost effective and strategic asset management works management responses. And so we heard during the uh, drone flight the overlay of Cyclone Marsha. Tell us a little bit about what happened there. Yes, yeah, so Cyclone Marshall was a, a bit similar to the weather. Sydney's experienced the last couple of days, probably a little bit more intense though. So it was a, it was a Category 5 cyclone that hit central Queensland uh, in late February this year. Um, <coughs> caused you know, mass destruction, widespread damage uh, to the infrastructure of the communities up there. In excess of $60 million worth of damage of the electricity network up there. And, and one of the keys to responding to disaster is how do you get that really quick insight into what damage has occurred and therefore being able to prioritise where you send your, your ground crews because you know, they're the valuable resource at the end of the day. They're the only ones that can fix the damage, um, but there's finite resources available there. So what Ergon Energy is, which is the electricity distribution company up in that area of Australia, is they utilise their uh, Rome's asset management and asset condition uh, service to go in and do a wide area assessment of the damage that had, that occurred as a result of that cyclone and basically use that to prioritise the response and, and where they put those ground resources. And what that outcome was able to achieve is you know, there were 70,000 customers that were lost power um, in, during that event. Traditionally, uh, without applying the, the, the Fugo Rome solution would have taken several weeks, potentially months, to restore those customers. They're actually able to restore all 70,000 of those customers within 10 days. Wow. So, and it was it was all on the back of that, you know, quick wide area assessment of the damage. Right, and you're using drones to go and capture some a, a combination of, of drones and and fixed wing, but wholly autonomous uh, data acquisition platforms. So they can cover large areas um, in, in short amounts. Right. So, what are we seeing up on the screen? This looks like a before shot of some vegetation. Yeah, yeah. This is a. Um, the easiest way to think of it is a heat map. Uh, so on, on the left is just a particular area of um, the cyclone impacted area before the cyclone went through. And then, and then on the right is uh, the afterwards. So you can see just from, from the, da the, infrastructure, uh, the damage to the vegetation in this instance, um, trees down everywhere. Um, and that's, that's a, just another representation. Yep. Of, and so in terms of them being able to take this data, you know, terabytes of data per day that you're capturing uh, from under multiple sources, what are you doing with that data? Yeah, so uh, that, that data is uh, actually, funny enough, delivered to Sydney here and processed within AWS. Um, but it wasn't always the case. So in 2008 is when we started the journey and uh, the traditional approach of, uh, of processing large you know, geospatial data sets has been deploying desktop style software um, on fairly grunty desktop computers. Um, highly, you know, very manually operated, um, takes a long time to do, to, to do the simple processes. And what would take, you know, potentially weeks or even months to process half hours worth of you know, data capture, uh, as they actually be able to be achieved within minutes, 
um, by by leveraging yeah, AWS or the, or the services within the cloud. Uh, so we we quickly realised you know, when we started our journey in two thousand eight that this wasn't going to scale. Uh, we wanted to build a highly automated uh, solution that you know provided the service to large scale utilities. Um, so it wasn't going to scale. So we had to build uh, a lot of our software from the ground up. So you know because the software had traditionally been around um, off the shelf wouldn't wouldn't suit the the style of processing we need to achieve. So we processed that. Uh, and that got us by for a little period of time. Um, yeah, it got us past the, the major risk or the major hump of the, of the early research and development stages. Um, and that got to a point then, you know, we quickly realized it wasn't gonna scale, it wasn't gonna survive either. You know, it was, that infrastructure was literally hanging together with a few band-aids. Um, there was occasions there where we were, uh, the infrastructure was alarming us on weekends where it was overheating uh, and we often deploy air conditioners into, those, into that data center. And we, we asked the, the hard question. We asked, well, it was a fairly easy question. Actually, the business case was quite easy for us. So, yeah, this is not where we want to have to focus our physical and emotional attention. And uh, so we jumped straight into to, uh, to AWS. That was about 18 months ago. The migration away from our data center to AWS it took about three months. Um, it was challenging for the team, a lot of late nights, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, challenging days, uh, but we're able to achieve it in a very short time frame. Awesome. And, um, and and now we're leveraging that to deliver our service, not only here in Australia, but now, now globally. And not only capturing lots of data and uploading it and processing, but you're also using machine learning to want to make and try and detect some of that damage and lines. Yeah. And what we're seeing here is some of the overlays of yeah, yeah, damage absolutely. data showing down lines. Yes, correct. So yeah, the ma machine learning, basically we're, we're using the machines to, to basically learn from industry experts around what a, what a good asset looks like or what a defective asset looks like. So what, you know, how can it tell when damage has occurred to that asset? Um, so we've got a team of, of people that are in there performing that manual inspection based on this data, but then the machine sitting behind that learning from that. So the next time it comes around, it does that assessment itself. Um, so identifying automatically here, you can see in this screenshot here uh, where a power line is is actually grounded um, due to you know, vegetation over that um, power line. And, and so if you look forward and see where this is going, it must be a pretty exciting time in terms of the technology and using drones, autonomous systems, capturing of data, bright future ahead. Yeah, it's, it absolutely is an exciting future. And uh, yeah, the, the, the data volumes and, and uh, yeah, you touched on it before, the Internet of Things or the, or the number of sensors that are being deployed out there and it's going to exist out there, it's just going to continue to grow. And the data volumes are going to just exponentially increase. And the necessity for being able to quickly turn that around um, and into knowledge or uh, actionable knowledge um, is going to continue to increase as well. So, you know, we see the cloud is, is going to play a key role in being able to enable that future. Um, the traditional way of doing things just won't, just won't work. Excellent. Well, Matthew, thank you very much for showing us through uh, what Rome is doing. And uh, thanks for the demo of the drone. So a really good example of how using some of these technologies and innovations of the 